everybody, Shane back with you here. Shane back with you here from Guitar at Work and welcome back. Um, this is Hootie and the Blowfish, I'm going home. The solo section, we just did a video on how to play the, the chords and all that. Hopefully you got through that. If you're looking for your first solo, your first uh, sort of guitar improv experience, I guess it's not really improv if you're learning somebody else's solo, but it'll teach you how to improvise. There's good vocabulary in this. Brilliant use of the pentatonic major scale, we'll talk further about that. And um, it's just a really good sort of meat and potato solo that you can, you can, you can kind of study the architecture of and maybe use a few of those ideas in your own jamming. I want to thank you for coming back and subscribing and all that good stuff comments and suggestions and uh, it's been a it's really been a fun time for sure um, I'll take you through it first of all you're gonna want to go to patreon.com to be a couple of pages here patreon.com slash guitar work go grab these sheets I'll be referring to them there's tab there for you nice and loud and clear kind of thing uh, tr maybe tricky to get through it without that so go and grab those and you're on your way um, we're gonna start out here now you can do this on the acoustic by the way there are workarounds for acoustic I'll mention as we as we move along if you don't have an electric um, it's gonna be coming from the E pentatonic major scale. There'll be a sheet for that attached as well. You're going to see this guy here. I'm going to start here. I'm going to start on the 12th fret of the low E, 12th fret of the low E, and just play that scale. And... E pentatonic major. Most would refer to that as box one. I'll go backwards as well. pentatonic major. Again, there'll be a diagram of that for you. Um, you really do want to know that scale. You want to know where the notes are coming from, so it's just not a bunch of tab, a bunch of numbers, completely unrelated. Um, if that scale is new to you, you probably just want to sit around and play that. Just get that uh, get that into your fingers, and uh, then this will be vocabulary coming from that scale. Um, now, the, the bar lines that I've written on the sheet, and I'll tell you there's two solos in this one. Um, uh, this is the intro solo first, and I'll do the full solo in just a sec. But intro solo, right out of the gate, you'll hear you'll hear the chords, and then next time around, you're going to hear this beautiful little intro solo. That's what we're doing first. Intro solo, clearly marked on your sheet. It's going to start here on a nine and hammering to eleven. You'll see that little uh, slur indicator with an H over top. Phrase number one. These bar lines are not real bars. I'll, I'll call them complete thoughts or phrase number one. You'll see that marked there. Going to have here's the phrase number one. <laughs> Slowly through that, 9 and 11 hammered on the A string, followed by 9 on the D, 11 on the A, 9 on the D again, back to 11 on the A, 9 on the D, and then hammering 9 to 11 on the D, and then 9. Now these are quick hammers, often referred to as grace notes. They don't have any rhythmic value, so it's not this. That's just taking up too much time. It's just a quick attack, like... Good, now as to approach, stop tape there and just get that together. Come back for phrase number two. They'll be marked on screen, so again and again, number one. Good, phrase number two coming now. It's kind of a rhyming shape. Slowly again, number two, starting on nine on the D, hammering nine to 11, a pair of nines on the G string, 11 to nine. Good. And you'll see that I'm always doing, and sometimes forget to mention that vibrato you're seeing there. Anytime you're spending any length of time on a note, you want to give it that sort of vocal inflection where just that little bit of warble in there. Otherwise, it's just kind of like a sine wave, and you don't want that. And plus, it looks cool. <laughs> Kidding. So, this phrase number two one and two back to back. Three coming. Number three slowly. Nine. Nine to eleven hammered. Back to nine. Eleven on the A. Nine on the A. Not eleven on the A again. Nine on the A. Pinky to twelve on the low E. Nine on the low E and twelve. There we go. One, two, and three back to back. Here I'm doing a couple little double stoppy things in there. That'll be easy to, to get together once you've got it this way. Phrase number four uh, start is the same as phrase number one. Here's number four. So you've done that before. That's number same as number one. So running right to phrase number five here. 
that's the same as phrase number two. You gotta like it, eh? So again, phrase number four and five back to back. Number five. Number six is this guy. Big band. Six slowly, nine, D string, hammering to 11, nine, nine on the G, 11 on D, nine on the G, 11 on the D, G, nine, and then bending 11, let's talk about bending. Now, if you're playing your acoustic, um, the workaround would be to slide up to the 13th fret on that string instead of throwing your back out trying to bend an acoustic string, which are typically heavier than the electric, so. But on the electric, um, a good bend. It, one time it's good to have your thumb over for sure is when you're bending. Your thumb kind of pushes down at the same time your wrist is bringing it up. Bends come more from the wrist than they do from individual fingers. You may notice I also, I'm bending here on 11. I also have my first finger on the ninth fret of the G string and he's also pushing up. They're both on the same string, both lending a hand to, to bend. So it's not just our wimpy ring fingers trying to, uh, trying to get that note up. That's just too much lifting for him. So I got both fingers on there. There we go. And don't just swoop at it. It's hard to get good intonation that way. So we want to hear the original note just for a nanosecond. And then up it goes to the same pitch that would be 13 on the same string. There we go. And he drops it. So it says bend and release. Release. And then there's your nine. There we go. Now that's a lot to take in. Obviously, learn a solo bar by bar. Come back and see us. I'm gonna now. Loop station is your best friend. I'm gonna pop that in the old looper. I erased it just so we could see how easy your looping should be. I'm gonna start the old beat button here. It's at 110 beats a minute. And I want to. Here's the chords coming. There's our loop. If you don't know those chords, just go to the other video that I just, just put up uh, with uh, teaching you the song. Uh, next time it goes around, I'll play that solo for you. Intro solo coming. And a one, two, three, four. Number two, three. Six coming. There we go. So I know that's quick and everything, but uh, take it slow and use it as vocabulary. Really, really, really great solo. Um, I'll jump right away to the, uh, that was the intro solo. I'll jump right now to the verse solo, uh, which has got a little bit more going on if you've done some soloing before. Um, starts much the same way here. Phrase number one in the actual solo section at two minutes and 10 seconds into the song. I'm gonna go nine to 11, hammered again. <laughs> Always checking there to make sure things, things are recording. <laughs> 9 to 11 hammered, phrase number one. Very much the same, eh, is the intro bit. And number one again. Actually, maybe I should play the whole thing for you so you can hear it. There it is here. going on in there but good technical stuff for sure number one again here starting out a string ninth fret hammering nine eleven nine eleven nine phrase number two number three a big bend now this is a big deal here bend and hold it says bending 11 on the g string gonna hold that bend up while my pinky gets added to the 12th fret of the b so bending 11 on the g Add the pinky while it's still bent to the 12th fret of the G string, and I'm gonna play those together. It says hold bend throughout. So there's a double stop in there. So number three slowly, 11 bend and hold. Pinky added. And then I'm gonna uh, bend and uh, release. And then pull off to nine. So one pick stroke. So bend, release, and pull off to nine. And then to the 11 on the D. And the last bit of that line. So number three in its entirety, bend and hold. Bend and release, pull off. Mm -hmm. One, two, and three back to back slowly. This 
this is beautiful. Steel on a note now from the major scale, not just major pentatonic, but the actual E major scale little hammer here. That's nine, ten, and nine. Hammer pull. One pick stroke, three notes. And then 11 on the G, 9 on the G, and then 12 on the B. So number 4 again. Number 5, kind of similar here. Just a different ending note, 12 on the high E. 4 and 5, back to back slowly here. 5. There we go, number 6, beautiful little half step bend. You're, it's a smaller bend. Half step bend means a smaller bend. You're only bending to the pitch of one fret. So you're bending to the pitch of the 12th. You're bending 11 to the pitch of 12. And it's a bend and release. You see that little hooky thing there? You do not play the bracketed 11 after it. That's just saying that the 11 has achieved its regular pitch after the bend. So here's 11, and there's the bracketed 11 when the bend is released. So there's not an extra pick stroke there. So again, 11, bend and release. 9, 12, 9, and 9, 10, 9, hammer pull. Now bend and hold. Add the pinky to 12. Release the bend. And there we go. Very last bar here. Okay, let me take that all the way through again. Here's number one. Here it is. Half step bend. Good, let's do it with the recording. It's a lot to take in. You might go bar by bar, bar by bar, stop tape, come on back again, make little marks. And here he is here. I'll play it all the way through here. This is the actual solo section, two minutes and 10 seconds. He's playing with it, sort of overdriven, sort of dirty sound. Obviously I'm playing it clean here just to keep things under control. Here it comes. I'll let him go around once. Here's the chords. So you could take little chunks of that and try it over different keys, different songs, try to just use the technique themselves, the techniques themselves to try to further your own vocabulary when you're soloing. Scales are just scales. They're not inherently musical really, but a little bit of humanizing in there and just a few phrases. And notice that how the shapes or the lines, they're very memorable. It's a very, very memorable solo. It's something you can almost sing back. And that's a sign of a really, really good solo is that you, you can remember it. It's not just sort of gratuitous technique, very musical. So I know that was tricky at times, but uh, lots of uh, requests for more lead guitar. I hope that hits the spot. Go grab those sheets from patreon.com slash guitar work. Thank you for all your support. Come back in, uh, subscribe, hit that little bell notification. It'll tell you when new videos have arrived. I always have a lot of fun doing this and hearing from y'all. Thanks for all my Skype uh, friends that uh, we do lessons with and uh, for people that are coming in person as well. So we'll see you again soon, guys. Take care, eh? Hey. Eh? <laughs> now.